Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iPadOS 16, or as Apple's calling it, iPadOS 16.1 is now available to everyone everywhere around the world at the same time on supported devices. And the new supported devices for this version are iPad mini fifth generation and newer, iPad fifth generation and newer, iPad Air third gen and newer, and all iPad Pro models. Any of the older ones, unfortunately, are no longer supported. Now, this particular update is going to be a very different size depending on which version you're coming from. But if you're coming from a beta, it's going to be very large at 4.72 gigabytes that I have here. And you'll see it, like I said, at different sizes, depending on which version you're actually upgrading from. Now, because I covered all of the different updates to iOS 16 in a different video that was over an hour long, I thought I'd cover just what's new on the iPad side. All of the iOS 16 updates are coming to iPad along with specific iPad updates. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's new. With iPad OS 16, we don't have the customization that we do on the lock screen with widgets and different wallpapers that we do with iOS 16. Maybe they'll add some of this customization in the future, but it's not available here. So if you're looking for it and you just installed it, unfortunately it won't be there. We do have a new wallpaper though. If we go under settings and then wallpaper, choose a new wallpaper, under stills, we have the typical iOS and iPadOS 16 wallpaper. So we can set that if we want to use it and you'll have new wallpapers if you have new M2 iPads or the new base iPad. So that's something that will have wallpapers specific to those devices, but they're not included on this one. So as we scroll down, you'll see they're not there. Now, the first new feature that you'll see immediately is we have weather. Weather has been on iPhone for quite some time. Now it's available on iPad with all of the same information, just laid out a little bit differently. So as we scroll down, you'll see our different forecast. We have our map, our air quality, and more with UV index and all of the regular information we expect. If we tap on one of the different forecasts, we have more detailed information again, very similar to iOS, but laid out a little bit differently. And then we can select what we're looking at as far as the overall forecast, UV index, wind, precipitation, feels like humidity, visibility, and pressure. So all of those things are here. Of course, you don't have to use this weather app, but it's available if you want to use it. One of the standout features is stage manager. Stage manager is only available on specific iPads on iPad pro third, fourth, and fifth and sixth generation. all support that as well as the M one based iPad air. Other iPads do not support stage manager. Now, in order to enable this, you'll have an option in your control center. If you add it, you'll see the button there. You can also go to settings, go down to home screen and multitasking and turn it on here. If you're not seeing it in control center, just go down and add it. You'll see stage manager, add it from your different lists of controls below. Now let's go ahead and enable it and I'll show you what it looks like. Now, if we go into Safari, you'll see it brings up a window. I can resize this window and I also have a bunch of different applications on the left. So if I go into maybe files, it switches out. If I go into weather, it switches to weather. And again, I can resize any of these. If I go to settings, it goes into settings. And if I resize that, and maybe I want settings open with weather, I press and hold drag weather on top of settings. This allows you to do this up to four different applications. So maybe we want to bring in another app. We swipe over from the left and then maybe we'll bring in Safari, drag it here. Now we have a full workspace and then we could switch between maybe home back to files, back to our workspace here with Safari weather and settings. So we have all of those options. Like I said, up to four apps you can bring those in. If I try to bring in a fifth app, it won't work. It will kick one of the apps out. Now we can also use split view, of course. So if we go in and tap here, we have the option to go to full screen, add another window or minimize. So we have controls at the top, but if we turn off stage manager, it goes back and immediately goes into split view. Now, if I want to use split view and bring in a different app, we have new controls at the top where we have the option for split view or slide over. Apple's made this a little more clear this year. So we'll select our app tap Safari and it brings it into split view. If I want to bring in slide over, I can bring in a slide over app as well, or move this one into slide over. It's really easy compared to what it was before as it's giving you more context and telling you exactly what's going on. So that's something they've updated in iPad OS 16. You also have the option to drag and drop between the different windows. So maybe you want to bring a file from one into the other. If we go back into stage manager, 
bring it over, go to files. Maybe we want to bring this screenshot into something over here. We can do that. So you'll see, as we tap, go into this workspace, we could drag it into any one of these windows if we want to do that. So that's something that's available. If you want to use stage manager, it's there. I actually find that it seems to make everything smaller because now you have a windowing system and it would work really well with external displays. Unfortunately, external display support is limited to M one iPads pro and the latest M two version. And that is coming in a future update. They had some issues initially at launch. So external display support is only mirroring at this time. Eventually it will allow for full external display support as well. Now with the latest M one iPads with the 12.9 inch specifically, we have reference modes. This is maybe for editing different video, or maybe you need to see photos in a specific way. So if we scroll down, you'll see at the bottom under settings, display and brightness, we have reference mode. Reference mode allows you to fine tune the calibration of the actual display and set different white points, white point targets, and more. When it's plugged into a different Mac, you can set it up so that it's in a specific view that you want to see for maybe final cut pro or photos. It allows you to have a full reference display and also works when it's connected as an external display or just mirroring in general, you can set it up for either one. Eventually, like I said, though, you'll be able to connect this and have different resolutions using it with an external monitor. And it worked really well for a while in the betas, but it's not available now. Now, the next thing they've updated is podcasts. If we go into podcasts, you'll see here, it just looks a little different. So we have all of our podcasts listed on the left. As far as listen, browse charts and search, we have our menu bar with all of our different podcasts on the right. So you'll see all of those here. It's just a redesign of it. It looks very similar to what we have with different apps now, making them consistent across the whole UI. Apple introduces what they're calling desktop class apps with iPad OS 16, meaning there's more consistency and all of them look more similar to what we have on Mac OS. So if we go into files, we have our options in the upper right, along with search, and then you've got different options for icons, list columns, and more. If we go into maybe notes, you'll see, here's a note. We can now customize the toolbar. So if we tap in the three dots in the upper right, we can customize the toolbar and that allows us to rearrange or remove any that we don't want or add them. If there's additional ones, the same is true. If we go into reminders, you'll see reminders here again, tap the three dots in the upper right customize toolbar, and then we can remove or drag any of these around. So Apple's making this more consistent, giving us a search bar in the upper left or upper right, and just making it a little bit easier with more context. So when you select multiple items, for example, so maybe we go back into files, if we tap on select and select multiple items, you'll see we have the option to delete them all, move them, share them. Or if we tap on more in the bottom, right, we can copy four items, rotate them, right, remove the background, and it allows you to do more things at once more easily. If we tap on done, then tap search search has been updated to allow for find and replace across the system. So if we're looking for maybe Apple, you'll see we have Apple here. And then again, we can find and replace across the system, copy paste. Everything is just easier across everything. Also undo and redo is now available in files, photos, and calendar. Now, if you're using Apple pencil with scribble, there's been some updates there as well. You can now use scribble to put an emoji in place. And also they've made the menus larger as you're scribbling in a specific area. So if we go into a message here and maybe we write the word Apple, You'll see the box expanded to make it easier to input text. And also you can draw emoji and they'll show up in here. That sometimes doesn't seem to work hundred percent of the time, but it is something that is allowed to work with scribble now, or has been added. If we go into notes, they've added some new pens as well. So if we tap on the upper right and bring up the little dialogue to show our different pens and pencils, we have a few different ones. We have mono line. So this is a new one. Just have mono line. We also have watercolor and fountain pens. We need to scroll over here a little bit. You'll see a fountain pen. So if we write Zolo tech, you'll see there's a fountain pen and then again, watercolor. So we have watercolor colors options here as well, and you can blend them and everything else. So that's something they've added with iPad OS 16. Now, as I said, many of the features in iPad OS 16 are the same as iOS 16, such as messages. So maybe we type, this is a test message, send this in messages, 
press and hold as long as they have iOS 16 or newer, tap undo send, we can edit it, and then we have all of the new emoji and more. So all of those things are in iPadOS 16. The same is true with mail with undo send and more. With iPadOS 16, we have an all new game center design. If we go into settings, scroll down, you'll see below podcasts, we have game center. And this doesn't look too different, but we now have the option for editing our avatar, profile privacy, allow finding by friends, request from contacts only, nearby players, and connect with friends. We can also go into our profile here and see our different achievements, our friends, what you've recently played, and how you've done against others. So you can sort of compete if you want to do that. You can also play together with share play as well. Now, this update does bring support for the Nintendo Joy-Con controllers as well, just like it did on iOS 16. So if you want to use those controllers with your iPad, you can now do that along, of course, with PS5, PS4, Xbox, and more. So those are all supported now. And to help with games, this now has Metal 3 for game acceleration. It helps games load more quickly and accelerates performance overall. That's something they've added with iPadOS 16. The Home app gets an all-new design as well. So you'll see Home just like they redesigned it on the iPhone. It has a new design here. So it's the same sort of layout, but different for the iPad. Again, with the menu on the left and everything on the right. With different options for your scenes, different cameras if you have them. When I'm near this camera, Camera, it actually shuts off and of course our options in the upper right we can go to home settings and under home settings if we scroll down you can see things such as software updates for your home pods and more that makes it a little bit easier to update and then also we have some new wallpaper so we can choose from existing there's a bunch of wallpapers in here we can set those as backdrops for the ipad so we'll just set that one of course they've added matter support as well so if you have new matter accessories that will be supported with the latest update within the system of ipad os 16 apple has added the ability of something called virtual memory swap which uses the storage of the ipad as additional available memory for apps with up to 16 gigabytes of ram that's available on iPad Air, the M1, and newer, so you need to have that as well as 256 gigabytes of storage. Now also there's an app that's coming soon called Freeform. Freeform is something that will allow for real-time collaboration across devices, iPad, Mac, iOS, and will be available later on. They showed this when they introduced iOS 16 and iPadOS 16, and you can see what it looks like here. It's basically a whiteboard that allows for collaboration in real time, so that's something coming a little bit later. And everything else other than that is the same across iOS 16. So everything from mail to messages to different apps such as TV and more, news with sports, and even your system settings, all of that is the same. So if we go into photos and you have duplicate photos, it will show duplicates. You also have the hidden and recently deleted folders that are locked now. Again, everything is the same as iOS 16 now. So there's a lot of consistency across everything, but I just wanted to share with you what's new specific to the iPad. And so that's everything with iPadOS 16.1. Of course, it's not that big if you look at it just from the iPad side, but if you include everything with iOS 16, it's a huge update, 150 plus updates. So be sure to check out the other video if you wanna see all of those other things. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I know normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.